Hi everyone, this is Moha Hasanovic from uh, Indian River State College. Uh, welcome back to our uh, fiber optic video series. To, uh, today we are covering lecture number six and we are going to be talking about fiber optic splices and couplers. Uh, just to refresh uh, our memory, uh, last time we introduced fiber optic connectors and at the beginning of the last lecture we talked about three different uh, types of uh, uh, connections that exist in fiber optic links. Uh, we talked about uh, fiber optic connectors and then uh, the other two types of uh, connections would be fiber optic splices and fiber optic couplers. That is basically the topic of, uh, of today's lecture. So today uh, we are going to be talking about um, uh, two distinct types of uh, fiber optic splices and those would be mechanical splices and uh, fusion splices. Of course we are going to define uh, what a fiber op optic splice means and uh, how it's being performed and what type of connection is uh, 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 established. Uh, we also are going to be talking about basic splicing techniques for each type of uh, fiber optic splices and finally uh, in the last uh, 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 portion of the lecture uh, our attention is going to uh, shift towards uh, fiber optic passive couplers uh, that also uh, uh, enable uh, connections between uh, multiple uh, uh, between multiple ports. So once more, as a review uh, from the from the last lecture, fiber optic connections are used to connect various parts of a fiber optic link with a goal of minimizing the loss of optical signal as it pr propagates through these uh, connections. Uh, so um, each fiber optic link has. Um, uh, a transmitting side and the receiving side and uh, those uh, fiber optic links may be um, uh, uh, covering very long distances so uh, very often uh, the total length of a fiber optic cable may not uh, be uh, sufficient to uh, cover the entire uh, 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 the entire distance from the from the transmitting side to the receiving side uh, and so in such a case you would have to use uh, multiple uh, fiber optic uh, cables that need to be connected in some way. So one way to connect them that's been explained last time uh, was using uh, fiber optic connectors and today we are talking about uh, yet uh, uh, the other two types of uh, connections uh, and those would be uh, fiber optic splices and fiber optic couplers. Okay, so what, uh, what, what do we mean by a fiber optic slice? So we are talking about a permanent connection between the two optical fibers. In other words, two uh, ends uh, of uh, uh, two uh, optical fibers uh, uh, with exposed glass core and cladding are being merged into each other and uh, connected in a certain way. Uh, so, uh, in a sense, that's, that's a different type of connection from a fiber optic connectors where we had uh, two connectors mating into each other uh, uh, at, a, at, a, at a made in surface. So, uh, and uh, also a fundamental difference is that in the case of a splice, we are talking about permanent joint, permanent connection, uh, while in the case of the connectors, you can disconnect and again reconnect so the, the, the connection is not permanent. Uh, as in the case of opti uh, fiber optic splice. And finally, fiber optic couplers would be uh, connections where we may have multiple uh, uh, ports or multiple inputs on one side and uh, multiple outputs or multiple ports on the other side. Here on the left side, you see uh, an example of a fiber optic uh, coupler where we had one, uh, one port on one side and then two, uh, two ports on the other side. In other words, the, uh, the signal would be, uh, uh, would be split from one single optical fiber into two, uh, uh, two uh, optical fibers. Or in the case of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a combiner, uh, the two, uh, um, two ports on, uh, on, on the right side would uh, act as inputs. Uh, so we'll have two uh, optical signals coming uh, through each of these ports and then being combined through the, uh, through the uh, coupler into one single output. How is the fiber optic splicing performed? So we're talking about permanent fiber joint whose purpose is to establish an optical connection between the two individual optical fibers. The way how uh, uh, this is performed, uh, number one, you have to have a very precise, uh, a, very, uh, a, a very precise technique that would uh, uh, establish a precise alignment of the two mated fibers. So the two glass cores would have to be perfectly aligned 
before uh, the, uh, the, the permanent connection is uh, established. Uh, this is uh, required so that nearly all the light that's coupled from one from the glass core from uh, one optical fiber is completely uh, uh, transferred into uh, into uh, an, uh, the other uh, and the other fiber uh, through the junction uh, that's been established through the through the uh, through the uh, through the action of uh, optical optical splicing. Uh, there are two uh, distinct techniques how uh, fiber optic splicing can be performed. And those would be mechanical splicing and fusion splicing. We are going to be covering both of them. On the left side here, you can see an example of mechanical splicing where uh, two optical fibers are brought in a, in, a close, uh, uh, in a close contact and then certain transparent adhesive uh, was put uh, in the junction between the two. This transparent adhesive has a very similar optical properties uh, uh, to uh, the glass course. So in a sense, when the light uh, comes to this uh, uh, junction during the propagation, it will uh, not be refracted or reflected, but it's going to pass through the, uh, through, the, uh, through the junction into the other side, onto the other side, to the other optical fiber. Uh, on the other side, uh, fusion splicing uh, is uh, a different technique where you're not using some sort of adhesive to make a permanent connection, but you are bringing two optical fibers in a, a close contact and then you are applying a high current uh, or uh, arc that's going to melt the, uh, the, 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 the glass and ultimately establish the connection between the two loose ends of the two fibers that, uh, that they brought in a, in a close contact. Let's also talk a little bit about the advantages of splices over the connectors. Uh, in general, uh, uh, optical splices uh, uh, provide a lower return loss relative to the connectors, uh, lower attenuation. Uh, optical uh, splices are also physically stronger than the connectors and they are less expensive. They require less labor than uh, installing connector uh, onto the uh, optical fiber. Uh, the joint is also significantly small, smaller relative uh, to the size of the connectors and uh, therefore very uh, uh, convenient uh, to be used as an inclusion into splice closures. Uh, they, uh, the splices also offer better hermetic seal and uh, uh, it's also important to mention that the splicing can be uh, performed with in individual fibers or, or uh, on, on groups of fibers, which would uh, significantly uh, re uh, reduce the uh, uh, time that's required to establish the connection, uh, as opposed to the connectors where each connector has to be uh, has to be installed uh, individually onto uh, individual uh, individual uh, optical fibers. This slide uh, briefly uh, describes. Uh, the way uh, mechanical splicing is performed and uh, uh, briefly they also describes uh, the actual mechanical splice. So uh, mechanical splices are used to create permanent joints between the two fibers. Two fibers are held in some sort of alignment fixture such as the one shown on, the, on this slide and then brought to a closed contact and then uh, the connection between the two glass cores is established uh, uh, through the use of some sort of transparent index matching gel or optical adhesive that matches the properties of the uh, optical properties of the glass uh, and uh, uh, that's gonna uh, result in a reduced loss and reflectance uh, that uh, uh, is gonna be present uh, uh, while light propagates across the junction between the two glass cores. Uh, mechanical splices generally have higher loss and greater reflectance than fusion splices that we're going to be talking about in the, in the slides that follow. Uh, obviously, in this case of the mechanical splicing, fibers are crimped to hold them in place and do not have a strong fiber retention or pull out strength. And that may be the reason why, that, that may be identified as the reason why mechanical splices generally have higher loss and greater reflectance than, than the fusion splices. The splice component itself uh, uh, includes a precision alignment mechanism, as we said. It's more expensive than a simple protection sleeve that's needed for the fusion splice. So what we're talking about here, as you will see in the case of fusion splice, you, you, you're going to use some sort of uh, uh, a protection sleeve that's going to provide uh, provide uh, a, a mechanical strength to the fusion splice, and uh, that uh, sleeve is generally much smaller than the actual 
a, 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 a fixture that's being used for uh, uh, for mechanical supplies, uh, and that's been shown here on this uh, on this slide. So there is obviously a certain advantages of fusion splicing relative to the mechanical splicing. So the question is why is mechanical splicing used uh, at all? Well, there are certain advantages uh, or, or certain applications where mechanical splicing will be will be prefer preferable relative to the fusion splicing. Uh, 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 one obvious uh, obvious uh, advantage of mechanical splicing is that it's more affordable, cheaper, as opposed to the fusion splicing, where in order to perform the fusion splicing, you have to have a fusion splicer, which is a device that is. Uh, 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 that is uh, relatively costly. It, it may cost thousands of dollars. So if you are a, a fiber optic technician that's going to be doing uh, 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 many uh, uh, optical splices uh, and that's going to be your primary responsibility, then uh, uh, buying a fusion splicer and, and doing investment into a fusion splicer may be a good thing to, uh, to do. However, if uh, you are uh, going to be uh, doing a, a, a Splicing just occasionally, that's not your primary responsibility, then uh, investment into fusion splicing may not be uh, justified. So in such a case, you'll most probably resort to the mechanical splicing. Another reason for using mechanical splicing is if you need to establish some sort of fast or temporary restoration, or uh, if you are splicing multi-mode fibers in, in, a, in a premises installation. So uh, uh, mechanical splicing, in a sense, can also be considered as some sort of a temporary uh, temporary uh, uh, joint that has to be established uh, in certain applications. Uh, also, if uh, mechanical splices are not crimped, they can also be used uh, as temporary splices for testing bare fibers with OTDRs or uh, OTSs, uh, etc. So the advantage of mechanical splices is they do not need an expensive machine, expensive splicer to make the, the splices as already elaborated. Uh, a relatively simple cleaver and some cable preparation tools are basically everything that you need to provide to uh, to uh, perform uh, uh, the, uh, the mechanical splicing. Uh, very often, you would also want to uh, have some sort of uh, inspection tool, such as visual fault locator, to kind of uh, check, uh, uh, double check uh, the success of your mechanical splice. splice and uh, eventually optimize some sort of uh, uh, splices if, uh, 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 if uh, optimization is needed. Here are a few uh, different uh, types or mechanisms of, uh, 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 of uh, mechanical splicing alignments. There's many different vendors out there that are offering uh, tools and equipment for mechanical splicing. Uh, here are some that are, uh, the, the, some, some are mentioned on these slides. Uh, so one of them is so-called capillary tube. Uh, that's the simplest met method of making a mechanical splice uh, where basically two fibers are aligned in a small glass tube with a hole that's slightly larger than the outside diameter of the, of the fibers. Uh, and uh, uh, it's going to be used to, uh, uh, to uh, 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 put the index matching gel that's going to establish the connection between the two splices. There's also a YouTube video link here that I would strongly advise you to watch to kind of uh, get a better feeling of uh, what we are talking about here. Uh, another technique is so-called fixed V groove, uh, where uh, uh, we are basically uh, working with single fibers or even uh, fiber ribbons. So you have a, you can uh, do a splicing of uh, of a group of fibers at the same time. Uh, this is also a very simple and uh, simple uh, technique that uh, works pretty well. Uh, the groove alignment plates can be made by of many type, made of many types of different materials and uh, are quite inexpensive. So a very affordable uh, type of um, uh, technique to be used to uh, align uh, fibers before a mechanical splicing is performed. Here are other two uh, 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 mechanical splicing techniques. Uh, the 3M uh, fiber lock is a version of the V-group splice that uses m metal stamping inside a plastic case to uh, align uh, fibers and to crimp them. This uh, is uh, considered an elegant design and good performance has made it uh, one of the most popular mechanical splices. And finally, uh, Corning as one of the, of the, of the uh, main manufacturers of fiber optic equipment and, uh, and the cables also have their own so-called GTE elastometric splice that's going to use soft elastomers to, to hold the fibers in a position. And uh, this technique is kind of similar to the fixed V groove, 
It's just that the grooves in this case are soft, so they uh, can easily accommodate slight variations in the fiber diameter. And there are two more uh, techniques. Uh, um, AT&T uh, has been offering so-called rotary splice that looks more like a connector. In this case, fibers are glued into a glass ferrules and then uh, polished and finally inser inserted into some sort of alignment sleeve. Uh, and finally, uh, they would be rotated until the lowest loss is obtained. So this so-called tuning the splice, uh, obviously there are certain uh, aspects here that have to be taken into account, such as the complexity and the cost and also uh, labor, so that uh, these types of uh, uh, rotary splices are not uh, so popular as some of other, uh, other techniques that have been uh, previously described. And the last mechanism that we're going to mention is a, a light cream offered by Tyco. Uh, these splices are used in the commercial industry for new installations and the repair of telephone company central offices, uh, uh, interbuilding backbones and the customer premise uh, uh, applications. Uh, we are now turning our attention to another type of uh, splicing and that's so-called fusion splicing. Uh, in order to perform a fusion splicing, you need a specialized type of instrument, so-called splicer, uh, that's going to be used to fuse the fibers together. Fusion splicers basically use an electric arc to weld two optical fibers together. The process of fusion splicing involves, involves using localized heat to melt or fuse the two ends of the fibers together. So this slide here uh, uh, shows a few pictures of uh, fusion splicers uh, and also uh, on the bottom left corner you also uh, see the, the actual process of fusion splicing when uh, a high uh, uh, electric arc has been created that would basically melt the glass and establish the uh, permanent connection between the two optical fibers. So how is uh, fusion splicing performed? Uh, so here we are talking about uh, an electric arc that's been uh, 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 created by a high current that is going to ionize the space between the prepared fibers. And that uh, uh, process is going to eliminate the air between the two fibers and it's going to heat the fibers to the proper temperature of about 2000 degrees Celsius. So you can see the whole process of splicing shown here on this slide where you see a, a, a high arc, this high light that's being created uh, between uh, the two electrodes. Uh, that would, uh, as uh, already explained, ionize the air and then heat the glass and ultimately uh, melt the glass and uh, uh, establish a fusion splice. The two electrodes that I uh, used to, um, to uh, 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 perform the fusion splicing uh, are replaceable part. they have parts. They have to be replaced uh, uh, for about 2000 arcs uh, for a typical splicer. Uh, and that's something that uh, should uh, be uh, uh, managed, managed as a regular maintenance of your fusion splicer. Uh, finally, after the fusion splicing is uh, uh, performed, uh, you are going to use the plastic sleeve with the strength member uh, as a protective device that, that you're going to put over the, uh, over the, uh, over the fusion uh, splice that's been performed in the previous uh, step. Uh, this process of uh, 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 placing plastic uh, uh, sleeve over the fusion splice is, uh, generally requires controlled environment, uh, as, uh, including the, the actual uh, uh, fusion splicing. So usually fusion splicing is uh, performed uh, in some sort of splicing van or trailer if you're doing fusion splicing out in the field. Uh, uh, so uh, use of uh, that type of controlled environment would uh, reduce the possibility of dust or any other contamination that uh, that may be present in certain environments in which fusion splicing is going to be performed. So here's a little bit more information about fusion splicing. So uh, again, uh, uh, the whole procedure uh, uh, described. So we first have to prepare the each fiber end for fusion. Uh, fusion splicing requires that all protective coating be removed from the ends of each fiber. So we're going to perform uh, the, the, the process of uh, fiber optic uh, stripping, uh, st stripping of the optical fiber and then uh, uh, cleaving or cutting uh, with the precision cleaver to make a, a, a very clean uh, uh, end phase of the uh, two fibers that are to be uh, fusion spliced. Uh, once the fibers are cleaved, uh, you'll uh, place them into special holders uh, that may be either removable holders uh, uh, that you can take out of the fusion splicer 
or can uh, uh, are part of the fusion splicer. So if they are removable, usually you would uh, install the optical fibers into the holders and then load the fo uh, holders into into the uh, into the splicer. The splice is usually inspected via magnified viewing screen. So one, once the splicing is performed, uh, the, the uh, splice the sp uh, splice joining is going to be uh, checked and uh, also. Uh, 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 loss through the through the through the est uh, previously established splice is going to be measured. Uh, it's also important to mention that splicer, uh, splicers usually uh, have small motors that are going to be used to align the end faces of the of the two fibers together before the actual fusion splicing is performed. So this slide uh, goes a little more in detail uh, uh, about uh, the whole uh, uh, process of alignment during the fusion splicing. Uh, so. Um, Fusion splices are usually used uh, with multi-mode fibers, but also single-mode fibers can also be uh, 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 spliced. And usually, in the case of a single-mode fiber, since we are dealing with a with a smaller glass core, uh, there's a, a, an additional level of uh, difficulty uh, uh, um, that uh, uh, exists in the whole uh, process because the alignment has to be perform performed in a very accurate way. Uh, so, in the case of multi-mode fibers, it's sufficient to align the claddings to achieve a low splice loss. However, in the case of single-mode fibers, uh, yeah, there is demand for the cores to be aligned. So, the whole mechanism of uh, alignment mechanism in a, in a, in a uh, uh, fusion splicer has to be uh, performed in a more accurate way. Uh, the best fusion uh, uh, is uh, uh, to, to achieve the best fusion uh, uh, requires a, a, a a lot of uh, uh, precision, so it's a complex matter that involves not only precise alignment of the fibers, but also careful application of the correct arc discharge power and timing. That's why it's important for your electrodes to be properly maintained. An incorrect discharge, for example, would uh, deform the cores uh, and uh, create a, 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 a unacceptable loss through the through the through the, uh, through the uh, connection. Uh, splice, splicer also have adjustable power and time to accommodate different fibers and application needs. So you have to be uh, familiar with the fusion splicers that you're going to be operating on, uh, not only to uh, perform the uh, uh, blind fusion splicing without uh, really understanding how the whole fusion splicing is performed and what are the capabilities of your uh, uh, of your uh, fusion splicer. As I said, uh, adjusting adjusting the, uh, the 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 the, the power and the time would uh, result in a in, in much uh, a higher quality of your fusion splices that uh, that you're going to be performing out in the field. So once the, the faces are aligned through a, some sort of a alignment mechanism, the splicer is going to emit a small spark between the electrodes uh, at the gap to burn off dust and moisture. So that's the first step during the whole splicing process. Process. Then splicer generates a larger spark that would raise the temperature above the melting point of the glass. We're talking of uh, about uh, 2000 degrees C. And finally, uh, the, the ends of the two fibers will be fused permanently. The location and energy of the spark is uh, very carefully controlled so that the molten core and cladding do not mix and that's going to minimize the optical loss. Uh, this is especially important in the case of a single mode fibers. And finally, the splice loss is estimated by the splicer. Uh, you will see it on the screen. The common techniques for loss estimation is, uh, are, for example, directing the light uh, through the cladding on one side and measuring the light leaking from the cladding on the other side, or by taking measurements of the uh, physical properties of the completed splice from the fiber image and using uh, certain algorithms to determine the splice loss. So all this is going to be uh, performed after the splice is being uh, 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 done. And usually you'll see the results on a small uh, visual screen uh, that's part of your uh, of your fusion splicer. Last portion of uh, this lecture uh, is going to cover um, uh, yet another aspect of a fiber optic link connections, and those would be fiber optic couplers. So after we have described uh, the process of, uh, of uh, uh, optical fiber splicing, we are switching gears to fiber optic couplers. So uh, why are we using fiber optic couplers? Certain fiber optic data links would require more than simple point-to-point -point connection where you have one, uh, uh, one optical fiber uh, that uh, uh, you know starts with uh, one single port at the, at the transmitting side and then one single port at the receiving side. Uh, 
these types of data links that require uh, multiple uh, multiple connection uh, are uh, uh, usually characterized by a more complex design and uh, in those cases you are using special types of connections that would uh, enable uh, 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 combining or splitting optical single signals into uh, multiple optical fibers throughout the system. So that's where you're going to find the use of uh, devices that are uh, commonly known as fiber optic couplers. So how do we define the fiber optic couplers? We are talking about device that can distribute the optical signal or power from one fiber uh, among two or more uh, fibers. Uh, fiber optic coupler can also combine the optical signal from two or more fibers into a single fiber. So we uh, can have either a combiner or a splitter that, uh, uh, gonna, that are going to be uh, two specific applications of a coupler. Uh, fiber optic couplers attenuate the signal much more than a connector or splice because the input signal is divided among the output ports. So that's also important to uh, uh, recognize every time you're splitting optical signal, obviously that the power is going to be split in different uh, ways. Uh, so in a sense, what if you have one input and uh, multiple outputs, obviously that the outputs, that the power levels at the two uh, or uh, multiple outputs will be significantly lower, lower than a single input. So that's just one example of... Uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the fact that optical couplers attenuate the signal uh, 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 during the whole process of uh, splitting uh, uh, through, the, through this type of a device. It's important to mention that uh, fiber optic couplers can be either active or passive devices. Uh, what is the defi definition of an active or passive device? Uh, the, the, there's a common definition that uh, is applicable to the entire uh, uh, field of uh, telecommunications. So uh, the, we are talking about uh, um, uh, about a, a passive device as a device that uh, redistributes the optical signal without any kind of optical to electrical conversion or amplification. Uh, on the other side, active couplers are electronic devices that would split or combine the signal electrically, and then they would use fiber optic detectors or power sources that would uh, turn electrical signal into optical signal, or the, uh, they may be also the other way where the optical signal is, is uh, transformed into electrical signal and then uh, split or uh, combined. Uh, so in general, fiber optic coupler may have, in this case, a certain number of input ports and certain number of uh, output por ports uh, where uh, the number of input or output ports uh, range between one and 64. The number of input ports or output ports can vary depending on the on, on a specific application of the coupler. Uh, there are many different types of fiber optic couplers, uh, such as optical splitters, optical combiners, X couplers, star couplers, three couplers, etc. So, different configurations of of uh, these types of uh, combining or splitting devices uh, that uh, have uh, found different uh, applications in uh, in the field of fiber optic communications. If we are talking about uh, an optical splitter specifically, we are talking about a passive device that go that is going to split the optical power carried by a single input uh, into two or more output uh, uh, fibers. Uh, usually, we have one input and uh, two outputs. In such a case, we are talking about so-called Y coupler. Or if we uh, are distributing the power uh, uh, in an uneven manner, we can also be talking about the T couplers or so-called uh, optical tabs. So there are different configura configurations of uh, fiber optic split splitters that are out there that you should be familiar with if you are going to be dealing with this specific aspect of uh, uh, fiber optic communications. On the other side, if you're talking about fiber optic combiners, here we are combining the power from a multiple from multiple uh, 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 optical fibers into a single output fiber. So in this case here on this slide, uh, an optical combiner is shown where we uh, see, uh, uh, I think eight inputs, eight uh, optical fibers that are then being combined into one, into one optical fiber at the output. This slide goes a little more into detail uh, about different configurations or types of uh, uh, optical uh, couplers. So we have X couplers that would combine the functions of an optical splitter and combiner would have multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Usually we have two inputs and two outputs uh, in the case of a X coupler. We may also have a star and three couplers that would be multi-port couplers 
that would have more than two input or two output ports. So, for example, a star coupler would be a device that uh, distributes optical power, power for more than two input ports into several outputs, while the three coupler would be a device that splits the optical power from one input into more than two output uh, fibers or vice versa. So different configurations, uh, 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 you probably uh, can already recognize why a certain coupler is uh, 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 called the way it's been called. Obviously, it has something to do with the configuration or with the way how uh, how it looks uh, that is directly related to the number of uh, inputs and outputs that are used on a specific device. And uh, finally, a few comments about uh, optical fiber fabrication. Without going too much in detail, it's important to uh, remember and recognize that we are talking about fabrication te techniques that uh, can be very complex and difficult to understand, uh, may uh, involve a whole bunch of different techniques such as uh, twisting, fusing, tapering, uh, uh, optical fibers to provide a certain certain uh, action of uh, 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 of uh, com uh, combining or uh, splitting of the uh, of the light when it's being propagated through uh, these types of uh, of devices. And finally, at the end, let's uh, quickly summarize this lecture. So today we talked about uh, two uh, 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 categories of uh, fiber optic connections. We talked about fiber optic splices and fiber optic couplers. Uh, the first portion of the lecture uh, uh, covered uh, uh, fiber optic splicing in detail. Uh, we explained uh, the whole process of fiber optic splicing. We uh, elaborated on two uh, specific types of uh, uh, splicing, so-called mechanical splicing and fusion splicing. Uh, a few slides covered mechanical splicing in detail, how it's being performed and different uh, uh, techniques to, uh, pro to uh, uh, perform uh, mechanical splicing. And then we switched gears to uh, fusion splicing. We explained uh, the, uh, the the the, the uh, fusion splicer as a as a device that's being used to to uh, perform the action of fusion splicing. We uh, covered in detail uh, different steps that uh, you should go through uh, during the uh, fusion splicing, such as the alignment, uh, applying the high arc to melt the glass, and finally uh, uh, check for uh, uh, a loss. Uh, or in a previously established fusion fusion splice. And finally, at the end uh, of this uh, lecture, we also uh, uh, covered the aspect of uh, fiber optic couplers. Uh, that is a third category of fiber optic connections that uh, uh, are used in uh, fiber optic communications. We uh, um, describe different types of uh, optical couplers and uh, their applications. We've seen that uh, uh, fiber optic uh, couplers can have multiple inputs and multiple outputs and uh, uh, in that regard, they have a, a different. Uh, uh, they are labeled in a different way, from uh, X couplers to uh, Y couplers to star couplers, three couplers, etc. And finally, we also made a few comments about uh, the fabrication of optical couplers. So this uh, concludes lecture number six. Uh, next time in lecture number seven. We are going to be talking about optical measurements. So once this, uh, the proper installation of a, of a fiber optic link has been uh, performed, you will do a certain uh, measurements to uh, check uh, or inspect fiber optic connections and uh, see whether you are within a certain loss budget that has been established by the project that you are part of. Uh, so uh, with this, I'm going to conclude lecture number six. I will uh, see you all next time. Uh, have, a, have a nice rest of the day.